It is nine minutes past eight. You're up to date uh, with all the main stories this morning here on Breakfast. When most people go on work experience, they're often tasked with little more than making the tea. <laughs> We've all been there. Mm. We? However, a medical student used her time to make a discovery which could help patients with cystic fibrosis. It's an inherited disease which affects more than 10,000 people in the UK. It's caused by a faulty gene carried by one in 25 people. The median life expectancy of someone with cystic fibrosis is just 41 years old. While there's no cure for the disease, so medics have been trying to find new ways to treat it. And after spending hundreds of hours analysing data, student Joe Armstead found a link between the condition and a fungal infection which can cause respiratory problems. Well, she joins us now along with Professor David Denning, who she worked with. Welcome. Joe, you're going to have to explain to us how you came about this thing because the n amount of data you had to search through was vast wasn't it yeah so um it all started last summer and i was working at withinshaw hospital and i basically got given the task to find how many people worldwide had cystic fibrosis and then we were going to use a previous piece of research that had been done to estimate how many of these people had a fungal infection. So I emailed and emailed lots of people from all over the world um, trying to get as many replies as I could and we sort of cut the line when we got 30 countries um, and we weren't getting many more replies um, and found that over half the adults potentially could have this fungal infection called Aspergillus and the other thing that we found was it's significantly underdiagnosed so when we looked actually only one sixth of people with the allergic side of the Aspergillus called ABPA were actually diagnosed from our estimations so that's two questions for you then David the first one is how significant is what Joe found out and the second one is when you gave her that pile of research to do were you actually hoping for something at the end of it, or was it just a case of, well, let's give us something to get on with? I'd ask the second question first. Definitely looking for something to come out of it. And she did a, a great job. It's not easy to collect all of that data and assemble it. Um, the mathematics wasn't complicated, but actually accessing all the data was, was, was difficult. Um, this fungal infection is a really important issue, and not just in cystic fibrosis, actually, and lots of other patients as well. Um, in cystic fibrosis, many of them are not diagnosed, and so they don't know they have this disease, and so they don't get treatment. And we know that their lung function deteriorates faster if they have this problem. And that's true in asthmatics as well. It's true in uh, many patients who've had lung disease from other causes, such as TB or bad lungs from COPD. So it's um, it really important. Cystic fibrosis, of course, only occurs in white people. So the number of people worldwide is relatively small at 75,000. Whereas if you take patients with asthma, it's more like 300 million. And probably between 5 and 10 million of those patients are really affected by this fungus in a bad way. So when it comes to diagnosis or recognizing that someone could perhaps have cystic fibrosis, how does this help? So patients with uh, cystic fibrosis are often diagnosed in childhood because they don't grow very well and they have recurrent chest infections. And there's a genetic test. There used to be a sweat test, but it's now been replaced by a genetic test. But there's a group who have quite mild disease, and they sometimes come in their teens or their 20s or 30s. And we've actually diagnosed people in their 50s with cystic fibrosis for the first time because they've got this fungal infection. Um, so it does help you identify some of these, some of these other patients. And in terms of, it's a life-limiting illness, isn't it? Which, which, I think 41 is the sort of expected age now. I mean, in, in the UK. How will this help, Joe? I mean, maybe you can answer this. How will this help what, what you've found in, in hope, hopefully giving people a better outcome? Well, what we're hoping is by people recognising how many people in their country may have this fungal infection, they may then recognise it more and start to diagnose it, and then we can get better management in place. Um, and obviously this could improve their life expectancy and their quality of life as well. Did you expect this to happen? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and so what next for you? Um, well, exams next week and then I've got two more years left of medical school and then specialising and whatnot. So but research is obviously something you enjoy. Yeah, I'd hope to do some more research in the future. You've definitely. set your bar quite high though, haven't you? Coming up with something that <laughs> perhaps isn't, you know, no one's ever 
found before. Yeah, it's, it's been really exciting, really interesting to be a part of. So I, feel, I feel quite sorry for anyone who's going to do work experience with you next time. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we start at the beginning and we go through it gradually. Like we've, we've taken lots of young people through uh, different tasks and different sorts. And um, Joe's piece of work was sufficiently large to get published, but not so large that it couldn't get finished. So it was a nice size of piece of work for, for a young person. Well, thank you both for coming in. Good luck with the exams, Joe. Thank you very much. And uh, Professor Denning, thank you. Your phone hasn't vibrated. You are on call, but <laughs> luckily we got through the interview without, uh, without anyone ringing. Thanks thank very you. much. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Stay put there.